of all, I want you to know that I work with landowners and loggers and farmers in the woods. I'm not an office person. You can't do, learn anything unless you go to the woods. I've got the best job in the world. I get to take a different man to the woods every day. Oh, God, I love my job. <laughs> all right. First of all, I got interested in this with our own timberland in southwest Georgia. I saw how much more money we were making than other people. So, and then I had demonstrations in um, Clarendon County, and it really was making a difference what I was doing. So this is what you want to see. Beautiful timber laying down, and you can't see because the lights are on. Can you turn the lights out? Turn them out. You still can't see. These are all marked poles. Every one of these is marked a pole. 34 years old, no, 24 years old, 24 years old on a few quay sand. Side index base 50s, 83. How many of y'all ever seen that before? You haven't, have you? Few quay sand, low side index. All right, how many of you care exactly who your timber buyer is? One of these three men is a timber buyer, one's a logger, one's a landowner. Guess. All right. A good timber buyer does not just mean he is honest. It means that he holds the logging crew to a higher standard of merchandising. How many of you care about who is logging your timberland? How many of you really do care which logger crew you get? How many of you actually know who your timber buyer is? Your timber buyer, the one who's operating the crew. That's very important. How many of you switch from one guy to the next who ever gets the highest bid? Okay. A good logger can add 10 to 30% to your money. That's logging by the scale, not a lump sum. A bad logger or merchandiser can cost you the same. Give me an example. There is a small park, uh, parcel, nine acres, I think it was, going to be clear cut. And it's going to be clear cut, um, this attorney, going to have it clear cut and he had it on bids and there was only two bidders. There was $700 of difference. And he knew one of the guys that thought was going to buy it and he didn't know the, the high bidder. $700 of difference. So I asked him the question, because I knew who both loggers were. I said, did it cost you $700 to fix everything you broke? He said, no, it cost me about $2,000. So, all right. And this is the truth. This is an awful landowner that I work with. And this is an interesting case. This company used to have the best logging crews in the state, but the daddy's gotten old and he's turned it over to people and those people are not the same. He's gotten rid of and retired the ones that were doing a good job. He's got a guy there that's so fat he can't walk through the woods, has a four-wheeler. And so and he's got an operator that I did not know this at the time. He likes to drink whiskey. So anyway, this is just one of many photographs. There was probably around 250, 300 trees per acre stand. How do you make your money on every timber harvest? Who is the most important person in the logging job? Do y'all know who the most important person in the logging job is? The loader man. He's the one that merchandises. And a lot of people don't realize that, but I'm going to tell you a story. And I'm not a violent person. And y'all look at my size. But I had a loader man start bragging that there wasn't enough chicken salt to load the truck up, so he put small salt timber on it. I want you to know that I picked him up by the scruff of his shirt and got in his face and yelled at him and told him never to do that again. I was so embarrassed, I did not tell the timber buyer for a week. Because I was, you know, I've never done anything like that. And um, I did not know this. The rest of the crew kept teasing him until he quit. Ha uh ha. -huh. But anyway, the timber buyer says, good. You did more good probably than I could have ever done. So anyway, they were teasing him about this little girl picking him up like I did. But yes, you're right. That merchandise, he's the one making you money. He's the one piling this wood and contemplating. And this is what you want to see. They're out there measuring for the exact market. We have a strong pine market in our area, so they're measuring for exactly what market we have, what's called an export market. Um, Y'all don't have that here. Sorry, it's really a good market. It sprung up. These logs are actually put into a crate. 
you know, you see like on trains and on ship docks, and they're just wrapped and cellophane, wrapped and wrapped and wrapped, bark and all, and they're shipped overseas. Um, and it's a very good market for this small saw timber. And you've got defects. What do you do with this? Yeah, this is what you call merchandise. And there are guys on that lumber that would see this and rather than cut either side, you can see that mark there and that mark there, they just put that whole thing in pulp wood. And this track right here, this is an interesting merchandising track. We've got a market that um, very few people have. And the market is a large saw timber. You've got to have a 17 inch butt minimum to go into the market. So it sounds good. I'm going to talk in South Carolina prices. I'm not going to talk in Alabama prices. So I'm going to break your heart, okay? Our prices are a little bit better than y'all's. But somebody comes up to you and says, I'm going to pay you $35 a ton for your timber, $33. Another guy says, I'm going to pay you $25. Who's giving you the best deal? Huh? No tenant. So that goes into merchandising. And so he's cutting the defects out of the tree. You can see those big old limbs back there. You can see how limby this thing is. You know, that's a wolf tree from there up. It's nothing but glorified pulp wood. Uh, this stand right here, this stand was sold by scale. And that's the key. This, is, this guy right here is a six foot five. So that gives you an idea of how big that tree is. Um, this, I don't think you could. <laughs> These trees were planted back to the soil bike days, back in the late 50s, early 60s. Law blowing, they were thin twice. Um, and the soil variables are from fantastic to really poor, because it goes way uphill, and when you get on those sand sites, it's very poor. And they're out there merchandising, but what I think is hilarious, this is the loader man. <coughs> He's so upset about how that tree's going to be done, he got off the loader and got down and started sawing exactly what he wanted. And that's what you want to see. That, that this is what you call a good merchandiser. I just had to think about that. I mean, you can tell that right off the bat. Anyway, when you got different products, you got pulp wood, you got super pulp wood, canter wood, and fence posts. Now, this one logger that I know had a very, very good reputation, one of the best reputations ever. And he decided the grass was greener, so he went with a different company, carrying that wonderful reputation. So I asked him the question, I said, Roger, you happy? He said, yeah, I don't have to merchandise pulp wood anymore. Well, there's a difference in that price right there. So the landowner's not getting that difference. It's costing them a little more time to do that. He knew that, so he's making more money, not making you more money. So just because that logger was good at one company, make sure that whoever has hired him is going to make him merchandise to the fullest. All right? This track right here was hilarious. Um, that was a county track. And I carried a whole tree chipper out there. Y'all, the trees were so small. I hope I have a picture of it. I don't. I might later on. But the trees were so small that I joked with the timber buyer, the, the logging crew guy over the logging crew. I said, look, the trees are leaning toward the truck. You're going to have to come. They're already leaning that way. <laughs> they were so small that all they had to do was cut the tops out and put them on the truck. There was no gluing them. I mean, they were tiny. But the county had to have this track cleaned so they could build on it. So it was either getting money for them. I called a whole tree chipper. He hauled in him and what? I thought it was a perfect site for him. And I got so tired of him he and hollering, and I don't know about my men and I don't know. Uh, uh. I called up a good timber bar and I said, Ken, how quick can you find me? He said, where are you? And I told him he, he found me. Anyway, long wooding it, double digging it, which is double cost, actually brought the county more money. The other guy was he and Holland trying to give me $8 a ton, where this guy gave me $11 a ton the same wood. So it, it pays to go with an honest timber buyer, and when they he and haul and start to go, uh, 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 run. I couldn't wait for that man to leave. Irritate me. Um, this is one of my demonstrations after a second thinning. Isn't that beautiful? Um, Chimisaw has different markets. 
There are different markets for chicken stock. You've got some places that want a 10 inch butt, some of these places take a 9 inch butt. We've got a special market, and you might have one in your area, and that's pallet wood. They take a lower quality chicken saw tree. So let's say you have some rough looking wood that's chicken saw, that's never going to be beautiful saw timber. And let's say this company offers you $14 a ton, but the other one offers you $15 a ton. However, that $15, that tree has to be perfect, beautiful chicken saw to, bit, to cut that two by four, four by four, where the other $14 a ton, he's going to be cutting your rough of wood that's going to be never be saw timber, never be quality, and sell it at 14. You're going to sell more wood at 14. So you have to be careful what product you're selling and who you're selling it to. How can a more valuable product bring you less money? All right. That goes back to that $33 a ton versus $25 a ton. Here we go. Here's that $33 a ton. The butt cuts off the logs. So in this case, I want to show you that this is all that landowner had. The rest of the tree was nothing but pulpwood. All they could get off of it was that butt cut. And that butt cut happened to be what that meal won. The top of the trees you can see are just horrid. And so that worked out for that landowner. However, if you've got a whole tree, instead of just cutting this part for 33, and this going for pulpwood or chicken salt at 15 or 16, that whole tree is now going for $25. Where are you making more money? You're making more money in that $25 tree. So that guy offering you $33 a ton may be just your butt cuts and then selling your other product for a lot lower where the whole tree could go onto the truck and bring you more money. So now y'all understand what merchandising, y'all getting a better idea of this? Yes. Do you make more money with a lump sum bid? I've only seen it twice in my life, and, it, and it, no, three times, and two of them they decided not to because it was they knew they had the only one that I know happened. It doesn't happen often. Do you think about how many timber sales that go on? I hear about it about once every three to five years. And do you think about how many bids go out? That's not a lot. A long sum every every three to five years. That is overbid. That's overbid. In other words, when you have a and this is just business, y'all. This is nobody trying to rip anybody off. But a timber buyer, my timber buyer in Georgia, calls a cruise a, a swag, S-W-A-G. Y'all know what that is? Scientific wild ass gifts. That's exactly what. Say it loud. So Scientific wild ass gifts. That's right. That's what he calls it. <laughs> you don't know how much that tree's going to weigh across that scale until you cut it. I've seen, I sold some late timber for the county that it did not have enough weight on it to make the trucks even up to, to 78,000 pounds. And we have 84,000 pounds. So I had to have the county lower their stomach price for the loggers to make money. You just can't have your loggers going broke. But the timber buyer doesn't want to go broke either. So they want a little patty there in case it's not there, right? Because they got to stay in business. A good timber buyer doesn't want to rook you, he just wants to make sure you... And I, there's been lots of timber sales I've seen where the, the wood didn't weigh out what they thought it would. Because you just don't know. But... Are, are many uh, clear cuts going as lump sum these days compared to 25 years ago? I don't think so. I think in South Carolina, yes. Yes, and um, I can give you perfect examples where uh, I could talk a landowner out of going lump sum and it was a small 20 acre tract and the, the, the timber buyer only wanted to make 6000 off of it, you know, that's $2 per ton for, to operate their, the number of timber buyers, their trucks, their office, their secretary, they even tried to make $2 a ton off of their wood. He made double what his usual amount was off a of lump sum because yeah, he really didn't know what was out there until it went on the truck because he didn't know. So the sand hill, but I couldn't talk the landowner into doing a by scale cut. Um, I'm going to give you an example of a lump sum sale. Timber buyer, I'm on the phone with him, and I can tell that his voice is a little shaky. And he said, I just got, 
what a bit. I said, really? He said, that was $50,000 above the next guy. And he said, I said, well, what in the world? I mean, if it's a $200,000 bid, that's fine. I said, what was the next lowest? He said, $80,000. Oh, His was $150,000. $130,000. I said, do you think it's there? He says, I hope so. <laughs> All right. So two or three months later or whatever, I'm on the phone with him about something else, and it bobs in my mind. I don't know why. And I asked him about it. He said, I done cut that $50,000, and I'm all right. I said, I'm not making nothing but gravy now. He said, I'm poor mouth and the landowner and the farmer tell him I'm going broke. <laughs> So think about that. Um, you have five to eight bidders on there, and that's fifty thousand dollars. And the next high bid was eighty thousand. He had a bid. There had been even more money lost by that landowner. And I know both the landowner very well and the forester. I ain't said a word. Are any sales made uh, based on other things like the, the door or the international? Door? If you do that, I don't know how to politely tell you this. Um, <laughs> What's the question? The question is, are sales on the door or international or scriptures? Don't do it. Uh, unless you've got a hardwood mill that does not have a scale. Because we do, still in South Carolina, we have a hard, some hardwood mills that do not have scales to weigh trucks. But you, I can take advantage of you every day with a scrivener, door, and international. And I mean, y'all just don't know, I could, I could roll you over every day. All right. That's something you don't want to see is your stuff's left high. I'm going to talk about this timber sale pretty soon. Um, maybe more money with top per unit bid. Not really. It depends on what your products are. I've explained that. Now, I want to talk a little bit about this. Notice how high your stump is? Yeah. And um, all the stumps were like that. All right? Y'all, people don't come to visit me because I'm weird, all right? I'll admit that right up front. Um, on a Sunday after church, I had a landowner and his wife drive up and he'd tell me, Beth, I want you to go to my woods tomorrow and tell me what's wrong. And I want you to call me. Well, he's a doctor and Monday morning it's his rounds. Uh, you never called him on Monday morning. I mean, that was a no-no. So, look at this. This is some more of it. And what really griped me was the tree on the opposite side looked Hey, this bark taking off too, not as much. But this was pretty persistent from the skitter driver. Now I want you to look at this laying down tree. And this is in the bundle. What do you see? What do you see? What color needles are these? What's happened here? Nothing. This tree's drying out because they didn't pull it to the deck and they didn't load it. It's soft timber trees now. I didn't get the top wood. That's not top wood. That's the whole tree. That's just the top of the tree. This is this is all soft timber trees. These are huge trees. They're all 12 and 15 inch diameter. But what I want to show you is look. It never got skidded. Excuse me? It never got skidded. It never got forwarded. What happened is the forester and the timber buyer did not communicate. <laughs> And the logging crew is bought by a company. It was in the contract that a company logger was supposed to log this. Well, guess what? If your company logger is doing a good job, where is he? On company land. So what they end up with was a contract logger. Nice guys. I've, I've done classes for them in the woods. Very nice guys. But the, they went on quota, and all that salt timber they cut, they left on the ground. Well, the forester never came back, and the timber buyer never came back. So nobody was ever contacted. So the landowner went, his saw timber trees in a thinning. I'm talking about nice-sized trees, too. The site index is there is around 90 to 100 as face 50 years, all right? So they're nice timber. And only one of these trees, that one, is a turn tree. All these other skid trees are non-turn trees. That's the skidder driver. When I was taking these photographs, he actually took his blow and shifted it to keep from hitting a tree. I thought, why do it now? You've already taken the bark off. <laughs> Tell us what a turn tree is. Okay. When a, when a skid load comes out of a trail, 
he, he needs to get it straight and reposition it to come out to this angle. And when he turns that load, he uses that tree right there to turn this load in toward the loading deck. Yeah, to change direction. And um, I've seen a lot of things with turret trees. I think the funniest one I've ever seen, the cotter man's got to make money. He's all right. The skitter man's still forwarding wood to the deck. The cutter man's got to go. The turn trees are still up. He'll come and lift that cutter up and cut it above the skid marks so they can still use it while he's gone to the next track to cut. So I think that's interesting. I thought that's it. Good move. Well, he had a forester and he had a contract. I don't know what went on between them. But he was not a happy camper because he was losing 14% weight per week. It was a hot summer week. It was in July, August, sometime like that when I took these photographs. That, that was lump sum bid with, with Dave. <laughs> I don't know. I, you know. I've had landowners do things in contracts like roads and stuff and the forester not hold it up and the logger's not, the logging company not hold it up. I don't know. I, I, my thing is here, know who you're dealing with. I mean, that's number one. Yeah, I know a timber buyer that is good as gold. If I could wrap him up and take him to southwest Georgia, I'd do it in a heartbeat. Um, he would go out of his way to have a landowner or a neighbor. Um, they were putting all the debris up against the trees, and y'all all know that's a no-no. What happens? The hips beetles get to here, and they say, mmm, I'm hungry when I emerge. My babies, my babies see this nice tree. So we had to get them to move that too. All kinds of weird things are going on. And I don't think this timber crew liked each other. All right? I just don't. Now, are these good loggers? Can you tell by looking at them? No. How do you find a good timber buyer logger? Well, I've asked that question. I keep getting, I don't know. And the one time I got an answer, I can't repeat it. <laughs> but it goes something like this. You got to go through a field of manure to find a <laughs> logger. <laughs> I don't know, but you might need that fifth whiskey after a bad logging job. I gotta tell y'all a quick story. Y'all know how how I am. About logging. Well, I only have a small parcel in South Carolina. I had to do a quick logging to get uh, some huge trucks down because I had to get something in my property because we had a flood. And so I had to have loggers. I couldn't get good loggers because there wasn't enough volume there. He said, get your neighbor. He's a logger. God, is a logging job from hell. I mean, he hit trees like he would not believe. He couldn't get a stump on the ground. It was horrible. And, and so that logger, when he found out that the, the one he used to say, yeah, he, when he found out it was, did a bad job, he said, don't tell Beth where I am until she calms down. <laughs> this is a business deal. Don't be swayed by what church he belongs to. God, I've seen that happen. If he talks about God's plan for him, if they're still talking about God's plan for him, he'll go south, okay? He did not figure that out yet. <coughs> If you and his kids grew up and went to school together all the way through college, that does not mean he's not going to mess with you. All right? They wear uniforms. That doesn't mean they're a good locker. Oh, this is the one I was like, I've been doing this for 40 years. <laughs> Run. <coughs> offer a few more dollars than a company you know does good work. They offer a value as you talk with it and keep going up. If they say, I mean, they did this, I have a work with a lot of black landowners and this lady called me and her son, I couldn't get her son to go with an honest timber fire. Just couldn't. I don't know. He went to college. Anyway, they, we did manage by having the honest one say, I bid against him as he kept raising his price. We went from $8,000 to $25,000. So, by doing that, I did help her, but he said, if there's $25,000 worth of wood, if that company's paying that, he said, I know there's probably thirty five to $40,000 out there. But we just couldn't get her to do it. If the loggers do not like each other, get them out of there. That is so true. I've seen it. If they're, I don't care. If your loggers don't like each other, they're going to mess with each other by messing with you on your property. I promise you that's going to happen. 
lots of good barber chairs. And this is a logging job where people, they didn't like each other and they were just, they just came in and did whatever they had to. Um, the, the forester never came back and the landowner was kind of upset. Get rid of the loggers if you do not, if they do not like each other. You cannot make good loggers out of bad loggers. I have tried. I have run after them. And you can repeat what you got to say to them every five minutes and they're going to go back to their old ways, okay? Depending on your markets, everything over 20 feet or long, long or longer and thick enough to be pulpwood should be on the truck. Um, a, a sign of a good logger is making sure that logging deck doesn't have anything merchandise, I mean, merchandise left on. That's a good sign. And again, it's a county, that's the size trees of the county track. That's the whole tree right there. Yeah. And just cut the top off and the rest is on the truck. Um, this is our research demonstration. The landowner had his forester diddle down for a dollar a ton. And the PhD researcher and I are you know, talking the phone. This guy would be on the phone while he was cutting. He backed over the trees. He went over the trees. His skitter man skidded up the trees. Now, y'all, we have marked different basal areas. And so you go back and he's taking out the ones that these trees were not marked to be cut. That's what he backed into. Um, so it lowered our basal area, and so I asked the, the PhD guy, I said, um, I said, do you think it's a dollar that, you know, we're laughing, no, we think it's more like three dollars a ton of cost him on this sale because this logger really didn't care. This is what you want to see. This logging truck is going back into another site. The gates on top, he's already on, and they're loading up to go to a man's property named Don White, and They've got wood on here from the last timber sale. It's not going to be left on the deck. And some log companies will say 50-50, some say one, you know, 25, 40, 75, you know, but they break it up so much wood goes to one letter A and then the next letter B. So that it's not left on the deck for you to look at, for you to clean up. This is what I want to see. My foot right there is on top of a stump. Now they've got They've got guards now on some of the cutters that are about this high. I don't like it because it protects the teeth. But when they have that, you cannot put a stump on the ground. You're going to be left with a three to four inch stump because of that cutter guard. I don't like it, but it saves teeth. When you have a clear cut, it is called a clear cut. It's not called leave the stuff that you don't want. All right? That's what you want to see is a clear cut. If you have Say something. Yes, sir. Uh, how it's left in a residual form oftentimes is driven by contractual language. I, you know, you got to tell people if everything is to be fell to the ground. That's not being contractual language. You can't just make something like that. Actually, a good timber harvest in my area, that's done without being in a contract. When they say clear cut, it's done. It's not a contractual thing. Um, if you're dealing with someone you don't know, put it in your contract. Uh, but, yeah, I walked on and took some photographs, and they were doing a contract, a, a clear cut. And when I took the photographs, you know, I don't know what kind of, I doubt the, I'm sure there was a contract, but it's probably not in there. But in some places, you may have to have a contractual thing to get this. No, that there's nothing. All this is brush top from the stuff they cut down. Right. So the, 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 it, they don't have a six foot rule there. Yeah, it's what's called six foot rule. Yeah, you have to have it all down at least six foot under when you leave, and no no mark of the timber by it. Now, is that a good timber buyer? I mean, excuse me, a good logger. Actually, he's one of the best in the state. I love him. Crazy, too. That's his motley crew. And one time I brought them, what do you call it, trail mix, and I found out that some of them don't have any teeth. Um, <laughs> on a dark night, you don't want to meet these guys on the street because you'd be scared of them. If you do not know who you're dealing with, then you need lump sum sales. 
hope that the value is close to the real value of your put. I mean, if you don't know, then you, you're better off going through and getting a lump sum, getting lots of bidders and whatever. But if you do know, and they're good, they can make you more money. It may be obvious, but you should always hire a good forester to prove the timber before you do any kind of deal. It gives you an estimate. Yeah. But I'll tell you, that, that big timber where y'all said the guy was trying to push it down, yeah. and you all want to know what the forester's estimate of it was? It was something like $2,350 per acre was an average. Y'all want to know what it cut out to? Yes. $2,997 per acre was the average. It was like $3 from being $3,000. And it was cut a year and a half ago. So he, he underestimated. It was a professional forester did go and estimate, but yeah, you really don't know until the poles are marked and stuff like that. Um, and this right here, I found her in a swamp on a landowner's call on a Saturday. She attacked me, and I took her home because I figured no one wanted the wild dog that attacked people. So anyway, this is my lovely pet, and she loves everybody now. 